Good morning guys, what is up? So this is the first proper vlog of 2017 and this is going to be an exciting one. Today I'm off with Dylan to the Resident Evil 7 London experience and this is his last day today and then it's never happening again. It's only been on for four days just over the weekend. Um, and I'm so excited, I've heard so many good things about this and apparently it's one of the most scariest experiences that's ever been invented or designed. Um, and it's now, what time is it? <clears throat> it's about 10 past 7 in the morning. Because um, I got there yesterday around 9 and the queue was massive. So I'm trying to get there earlier today and Dylan's joining me there later. So let's go. <laughs> See, every now I'm giving our disclaimer form that we gotta read and <laughs> sign. We're number six in the queue and we've got a disclaimer to now. Basically, we've got to like read it and sign it. There's a guy over I'm gonna film him. There's a guy over there. He's been coming since Saturday or Friday or something. Oh, we picked your name. Taking a picture of them, you're waving. Enjoy, we'll see you a bit later on. Thank you. Okay, so we're now inside the building. We've got our wristbands on and we're ready to go. Our time slot is at two o'clock, so we've got to be back for half one. Um, and I'm so excited about this. Look at this. This is mad. We are going to go play the game and the VR version of the game now for a bit. Um, but let's go. Okay, so we're going to have to try the VR version of the game that we tried earlier. Um, Okay, so we found the bakehouse. This will be coming in about an hour's time. So we'll be coming in here, <coughs> which is incredibly creepy. And you can tell it's in here because one, I saw a photo of it online, and two, they've got all the cables coming out here. And um, they got the control room in there. So this is going to be fucking sick. And I'm absolutely petrified right now. Okay, so we're just waiting for our time slot to come up now. Yeah, man. Um, and we've been playing the demos. And demos are pretty... They're, they're quite a realistic representation of what we're meant to expect inside the game. Um, and yeah, if there's anything like the game, it's going to be pretty, pretty real. Um, yeah, our time slot's about 10, 15 minutes. So we will see you after we come out. If we haven't died. died, if we haven't died, we've been taken, or the old lady's caught up with us, <laughs> or the old man's or we've been infected. Because yeah. I got infected last time I played it, but, um, but yeah, we'll see you after we come out. That was the day everything changed. We had no idea what we were stepping into. We didn't know what we had to do to get out. There are some things you cannot forget. Okay, so we just came out of the Resident Evil experience and 
Holy fucking shit. That was the scariest, most intense, dramatic thing I've ever done in my life. And as you can see from this photo, which we got inside, I am quite literally shitting myself. But what do you think of that, man? That was just crazy. Wow. My, I still can't like comprehend it. It's yeah. insane. Um, so it's slightly based on the game. I mean, the characters are the same as the game. I mean, I've never played the Resident Evil games or anything, so I've no idea what I was going into. Um, but you basically got a poison the family when you first get in you got to make the poison in one of the rooms um, you basically go into the baker house which is the family house um, and you got to poison the father uh, with the poison that you've made in his gravy so the father then dies um, and the father then stabs the son so that all shit kicks off then you go upstairs to the attic to try and hide from them because they're still alive a little bit um, and then there's the mad mother up there who's got She's trying to kill you. You've got to hide in like suitcases from her. You then got to get a lock to get out. Then you go into this room full of crying babies, and then you finally escape, uh, escape the building. Yeah, that's good. Um, but that is still one of the best things I've ever done, and hopefully it's going to become a permanent thing. And if it is, I'm so coming to this again, like as many times as I can, because I want to do that again. And I still like it's fucked me up. I'm not going to be able to sleep well tonight because that was messed up. But um, when I get back to where I live, yeah. I'm going to give a proper in-depth review about the whole experience and just give like a run through of everything that happened. Um, and yeah, and we'll be able to give you our score as well because there's a point system, but they haven't come through yet. So we're going to go inside, play the game again with VR headsets on. Um, and yeah, I'll see you back at the curve. Yo, what is up guys? So I just got back to the curve. Um, and I still can't believe how mad that was. Um, I'm reading some reviews online which have been released and again, they've seemed like they've all had such an amazing experience, but all with little subtle twists. So the first thing you experience is the briefing. Uh, you go into a room with Sewergate on the wall behind because that's the company you're working for, um, which is like a paranormal like investigation team. They explain that you're going into this place called the Baker House um, and they want you to just see any paranormal activity, see if anything's going on. Um, so you can get escorted from the site you're currently at over to where the Baker House is, which is literally in just a old abandoned warehouse sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, you first go into the building, you're instructed to go downstairs, take a right, um, and as your tour guide suddenly opens the door and lets you into the building, at this point you're on your own, there's this dummy baby which starts crawling across the floor, which is the creepiest thing ever. Um, but yeah, you go into the first room um, and you're told to sit down with instructions on a piece of white, of yellow paper. And this video starts and it's a previous investigator that's gone into the building um, and he's explaining what's happened and what's happened to him so far. And he says that you need to um, follow his instructions because he left little yellow notes around the whole building for you to find clues of his location and to get rid of the Baker family. Um, <clears throat> so once you leave the first room, you go into the second room, which is the kitchen in one area, and then behind it, in the same sort of area, you've got a morgue um, with two sort of caskets in the wall, both with mine and Dylan's name on. And if you open the top one, uh, there's a dead body in there with your name on it and the today's date. So it's like you actually died today, which is creepy as hell. Um, but the morgue down below is empty and it's got loads of clues in. Uh, and basically Dylan had to give me these clues over the radio um, to help me find the ingredients in the kitchen, which we need to make the poison. Um, and so we collect the ingredients together. We make our way to the next room, which is the living room. Um, and we're told in there to gather a set of, well, a code to open a safe uh, to get another ingredient um, for this poison. Um, but sadly, we pretty much failed this room. We did awful in there, apart from we found a bullet, which I thought would come in handy later, so I put that in my pouch. Um, and we suddenly get greeted by a character. I've forgotten his name, um, but he's one of the main characters from the game. Uh, it's Jack's son. So whoever has played the game or knows anything about it. Um, so he comes in with bags and he suddenly put his black bags over our head and drags us away. We don't know where we're going at all. 
um, which leads us into room five, which is the dining room. Actually, no, this is room. This is room four. This is room four, the dining room. Um, and suddenly you hear Jack come in the background, and he starts shouting in your ear, saying, "Welcome to the family, boy." In like this, because it's all like a deep American sort of Tennessee accent. Um, and yeah, suddenly he whips the bag off your head. They're there with knives, and you're re around this dining table. Um, and he came over to me and said, uh, can you go and get the gravy, please? So as I go over to get the gravy off the mantelpiece, I suddenly take the poison that, I've, that we've made out, pour it in the gravy, mix it up while they are both got their backs turned, and then put the gravy on the table. Suddenly, Jack, this guy, comes over, starts to eat all this gravy, starts to smear it all in his body. Um, and this is so scary because it's, it genuinely feels like you're in a room in this house with two psychos because the other guy is going mental shouting at you um, and this Jack guy is just eating gravy with his hand and just slapping it and rubbing it all over his body then he comes up to me, starts shouting at me and Dylan spitting gravy and stuff all over us and he goes over to his son and gets really angry and ends up stabbing him um, and the effects are amazing because he's got blood pouring out of him everywhere blood is everywhere um, and so he sort of passes out and dies um, and then the same happens to Jack because obviously we've given him the poison but there's a key around his neck that we've got to get off him to go up to the next room in the attic um, so luckily when he dies I go over and take the key off him but suddenly they both awaken and they start to try and chase you out um, you need to run up into the attic and close the door before they come up um, and this attic bit was the scariest thing I've ever done you're told to hide from the mother whose name is Margarita or Margaret or something like that and um, suddenly you get a phone call um, saying shit she's coming hide so Dylan jumps in this massive straw basket I hide behind this case of this like other travel suitcase um, and suddenly she starts coming in she sounds like a right mental person she's got like a, um, a broom that she's sweeping around and she's a really old woman um, and it was like being in a horror film and you're scared out of your wits so you go and hide behind the sofa I was petrified I was shaking so much I've never done anything so intense in my life um, so um, yeah you're hiding from this woman um, and there are clues to a code to get out of the room on these mannequins so we collect the code to, for the mannequins and now we manage to escape um, but obviously Margarita finds us because um, that happens to everyone that's part of the story she's meant to find you so she suddenly chases you out of the room um, and then suddenly you go into this weird metal mesh room full of baby dummies and loads of crying and screaming of like babies laughing and all that shit and it was so messed up um, but there's a riddle on the wall saying how many dummies are blind how many dummies are uh, are limbless and how many dummies are headless and you've got to count how many dummies there are around there which don't have any eyes which don't have any heads and don't have any limbs and that creates the combination to get into the final room which is the bedroom and this is where you meet the character that you saw at the start on the video screen instructing you about how to escape this house and all of the ongoings that has happened and you are given you in the previous room you collected two keys so you go over to the bed which he's chained up on, you release him from um, <clears throat> release him from the chains he's attached to on the bed and there's a, a massive briefcase on the floor um, again which has another key and we open up the chest and there's a gun in there so we use the two bullets for the gun um, and as we're trying to find the keys to escape this room um, Dylan goes over to the cabinet and opens up and suddenly this other actor jumps out covered in blood and everything and it turns out in the storyline that this guy faked his death um, but it turns out that he was um, he had been sort of infected by the zombie creature sort of thing so he was turning into a zombie gradually but he had the key around his neck so obviously the character then goes up and shoots him um, but then the shot wasn't so successful and he suddenly tries to attack us all and at this point we're running around the building trying to find a way out uh, but then we find the staircase and the character takes us down the staircase and he says look the guy's upstairs still awake you guys leave and escape I need to go upstairs and try and finish this guy off because it, it turns out it was his best friend in the storyline um, and yeah as we came out of there I was shaking so much Dylan was shaking so much it was so so intense
I've never done anything like that in my life. I can't even believe that anything like that would happen um, because it's so realistic. It genuinely feels like you're in this scenario and the acting was amazing. It was so realistic. They genuinely seemed like they were proper psychos. Um, and yeah, as you leave, you'll get given this photo. Um, I'll put it big on the screen now um, after your experience. Um, and as you can see in that photo, I was shitting myself. Um, and yeah, it's literally one of the best things I've ever done and I can't wait for this to become a permanent attraction if it does. Fingers crossed it will become a permanent thing somewhere um, because it needs to be. That's, that thing needs to be seen by a lot of people and I would happily pay, I'd say I'd pay at least 30 quid for that. I'd pay 50 for it because it was that good and I really want to do it again because just the immersiveness of it um, and it was just insane. Um, but yes, thank you for watching this video guys. If you've got any questions about this at all, then just leave them below and I'll answer them for you. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.